Okay, we're back again and we're talking about measuring and calculating one more time. I think this might be our fifth discussion from chapter two on measuring and calculating. Today, um, we're going to talk about the metric system. And you know what? You've, you've learned about the metric system since elementary school. I'm going to review just a few things with you and I'm going to do it sort of quickly um, because I think you're familiar with most of the terminology we're going to use um, today. Now there are five basic units of measurement. They are length, volume, mass, temperature, and time. Now length, the unit that we use to measure uh, the length of things in is the meter. Um, this is the basic unit of all distances and was first defined way back in 1790 as one ten millionth of the distance from the North Pole to the equator if you can believe that. The latest definition of the meter is given in terms of the speed of light. In the last few years some very sophisticated methods have determined the speed of light to a very high degree of accuracy. Turns out the speed of light is 299,792,458 meters per second. So the meter is simply defined as the distance light travels in one 299,792,458 of a second. Uh, it doesn't change the length of a meter at all. A meter is a little bit longer than the familiar yard that you might be used to using. Volume. The basic unit of volume um, is uh, the volume of a cubic meter written with the capital M cubed. So if you can imagine a cube that's a, a meter tall by a meter wide, by a meter deep, that would be the cubic meter, but that's a pretty big volume, uh, much too large for us to work with. So for uh, convenience sake, we will use a smaller unit. We like to use the liter, which I will actually define for you later today. Mass, the official SI unit or uh, system, uh, international system of measuring the mass of an object is the kilogram. Um, remember the difference between the terms mass and weight. We talked about that earlier, one of our very first discussions this year. Maybe you can go back and try to answer that from your knowledge. Uh, temperature. Uh, the unit of temperature is something called the Kelvin. Now that might be brand new to you. I'll bet you expected me to say Celsius or centigrade, but in reality the unit of temperature is something called the Kelvin. Later in the course we will use that unit extensively. For right now, um, the unit of centigrade or Celsius is what we will use. On this scale, the freezing point of water is defined as zero degrees Celsius and the boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, moving right along. I've mentioned the term SI for you already. That stands for System International. That sounds backwards to us, doesn't it? It's a French term. We like to say an international system of units. Now on page 29 of your textbook, uh, you will find a list of prefixes. These prefixes you must memorize. And you need to know the meaning of the prefixes all the way from mega, which is the largest of the prefixes I'll have you learn, down to nano. So please take the time and memorize those. They are on page 29 of your textbook. If you looked at those prefix and found the name for a tenth of a meter, you would see that the prefix for a tenth was deci. So a tenth of a meter then would be a decimeter, which literally means a tenth of a meter. Now if I formed a cubic box with this unit as the edge, what would be the volume of that box? So if the height of that box were one decimeter and the depth of that box were one or was one decimeter, and the width of that box was also one decimeter. What would be the volume? Now volume, kiddos, you should know, 
is uh, the volume of a cube will be its uh, the length of one edge cubed or we could say the length times the width times the height so in this case we'd have a decimeter times a decimeter times a decimeter and I'm certain you can handle this math one times one times one is one decimeter times decimeter times decimeter is decimeter cubed so the volume of this cube would be what we would call a cubic decimeter. So once again, it's a tenth of a meter tall by a tenth of a meter wide by a tenth of a meter deep. Now I actually have a cube like this in class and I'll pull it out and show it to you so you can envision how large that really is. We call that a cubic decimeter. Now the volume is the same as something that we're more familiar with even to people who live in non-metric parts of the planet, especially if you buy soda pop. It turns out that a cubic decimeter is also the same as one liter. So a liter is literally a cube that's a decimeter on each edge. We can call it a cubic decimeter or we can call it a liter. They are the same thing. Now think about this. How many centimeters are on the edge of this one uh, edge of this cube that is one decimeter on each edge? Well, I've drawn it out for you. If this is one decimeter, each one of these cubes here inside of it has a length of one centimeter. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, that's the same as ten centimeters. So each cube or each edge of this cube that's one decimeter long could also be written as 10 centimeters long on each edge. So we have 10 by 10 by 10. Now let's think about this. On the top of the next page, I ask you what is the volume of this cube in cubic centimeters? So once again, my volume is of a cube is the length of one edge cubed, or we could say length times width times height again and this time we're going to do it in centimeters 10 centimeters times 10 centimeters times 10 centimeters we can do this math together 10 times 10 is a hundred times 10 is a thousand centimeter times centimeter times centimeter is centimeter cubed now that cube that's a thousand cubic centimeters, remember, is also a cubic decimeter, or we called it a liter, didn't we? So in the terms of the prefixes we've thoroughly learned, what is the term used to describe one one thousandth of a liter? Well, if you look back on page 29 and those prefixes that you are to learn very soon, milli is the prefix four thousandth so that's the same as a milliliter. Therefore, what is the relationship between a milliliter and a cubic centimeter? And they are the same. So a cubic centimeter and a milliliter are the same thing. They, are, they represent the same volume. Okay, well that's just a short lecture today. We're going to talk about symmetric conversions next. Enjoy! Bye-bye.